Hey, weirdos, I'm Elena. And I'm Ash. And this is Morbid. Hey, it's spooky season. It is, we are in it. What is it, like uh, when you listen to this, October something? Yeah, it's not that right now, but no. it's, it's that right now. Well, Whoa. that was that was super <laughs> so, deep, Alina. That was deep. Right now, it's like sometime in September, and that's still spooky season. Mm-hmm. So it's it's pre October. It's pre October, but now it's October. If you're Halloween listening, Eve. Uh, <laughs> Halloween Eve, Halloween, Halloween. Um, and we, you know what? It feels a little like Christmas because we got some delightful gifts from we we went to our PO box, the PO box, the PO box. And we got, you guys always send the coolest shit. You really do. We have it decorating our pod lab all the time because you're awesome and you're so fucking talented that it makes me sick. And it's so nice of you. You make me (sighs) sick. And it's so nice of you just to like send us cool trinkets that you make. And to like use your skills to give us a gift. That's the thing. Cause like, really cool. You talk about the first thing we received because I think it's one of the coolest gifts I've ever gotten in my life. I'm just like in awe of this. So it's from there. It's from, I want you to listen to this so you can go look it up on Etsy because let's blow her shit up. Uh, It's uh, Ginger's Papery. Papery. Uh, and it's, let's see, gingerspapery.etsy.com. And it's papery, P-A-P-E-R-I-E. And gingers before yeah. that. So this lovely, lovely lady, I don't know if she wants us to say her actual name. Let's not say her so actual name just So I'm not going to just in case. in case you don't want me to. Yeah. Um, but she made us the most beautiful, customized journals like scrapbooky kind of journals that are so pretty very specific to us yes we sat there this morning and went through every fucking page every little piece of paper every detail they are the most beautiful things i have ever seen she's so talented and every like couple pages there would be like an insert where you would like pull out even more paper yeah like like, a little pocket little yeah and there was just cool like little articles, cool poems, mm-hmm. cool like little old Easter ads eggs. from like like vintage ads. Yes, like Ash got like a bunch of vintage like uh, like hair styling ads. Yeah, and I got a bunch of like old pharmacy ads mm-hmm. and like apothecary stuff and like there was like a old like this ancient looking to tell like science textbook page oh, that I was in there. That. It was so cool. Yeah, she put a zodiac wheel in mind. She yep. included stickers in the back. It, honestly, just the coolest, most thoughtful gift. It was really sweet. It really made our day. And you can order off of her Etsy sh- um, yeah. shop and like customize your journal with her. Like yes. they even had our initials on the front. Yeah, it's amazing. No, I it love so it so cool. much. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're amazing. That was just so fucking cool. It really was. Yeah. And then we got this really cool piece of artwork and i don't think it came with a card or like the card got lost somehow but it's this framed piece um and it's a it's like, like a, a cross stitch no it's it not a, i don't think it is a cross stitch it's like beads oh it is they're almost they almost look like little rhinestones oh shit and it's a it's a drawing of me and elena standing back to back elena's got black on and i have white and a black skirt and we're standing in front of this circle and it says keep it weird morbid and it's so cool. It's and if you so sent it cool to us, looking. you're the fucking tits. Yeah, it was really cool. Name yourself. Name yourself. Show yourself. <laughs> because this is cool. It's going up on my side of the wall and I'm it really is. excited. There's I a just, literal perfect spot for it. That's the thing. I happen to have the yep. perfect spot. So I said, can it go on my side of the wall? Oh, it is. It's like diamondy. Yeah. Because it just like, it's like glittered when you put it down. Sorry, all my papers are going to go Oh, that's really fucking cool. Yeah, it's really pretty. And I, I'll... I, Hello? <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm sorry. Ma'am, uh, this is Wendy's. <laughs> ma'am. I don't even know what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I just love gonna, it. Yeah, you just love it. I'm speechless. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I was going to say, I want to know. I don't know if this person who made it, if this is like their original drawing, because I've seen a sticker with that too. Yeah. Like the same. Which is such a cool one. Yeah, it's cool. So if you drew it, I love you. We'll post a picture of it. 
I don't know. You guys like just rule. A You're little just bit. awesome. And so it's many people cool. sent us cool books to read. And yes. sometimes people send books for like the kids, which is really sweet. Yeah. We you appreciate guys, all of it. We just appreciate you so much. You don't have to send us anything. Oh, so, oh, that's another one. Before we get into it, oh. I promise we're gonna get into it. But do you have the... I would like to shower you with love. I do. Okay, good. Um hold on. So I got a really cool one from uh let me see. The store, her like little place is Bricks by Penelope. Bricks by Penelope. And she takes bricks and she paints them to look like books and shit. And she got me a brick and painted it to look like the butcher and the wren. I'm going to take a picture of it because it's so fucking cool. It's so cool. It went right in the bookshelf, like right there, you would right really, next to me. You would never even know that it's a brick because yeah. it's so smooth smooth and beautiful and just like the details. Yes. like. Because obviously the butcher in the red cover has like the eyeball and then there's something yeah. in the eyeball. It's so, so impressive. It is so fucking cool. I just, it, what a banner day. I what know. A banner, and we needed it this morning because both both of us got our flu shots. Oh my God. <laughs> and I think we were just exhausted. Like, the, you know, you're fine after a flu shot, but yeah. like sometimes you're... Your immune system immunes, you know, which is good. My immune system immuned so hard yeah. that I want to find it. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't sleep well last night because I was just like uncomfortable. I just didn't feel great. And your arm gets so sore. So we were sore. just a little tired this morning and just not ourselves. I thought and I was going to yak. Yeah. So it was a nice little like, it was a nice Uplifting. thing because Mikey came in like fucking old Saint Nick <laughs> with a with a big... <laughs> Sack full of full of peel box stuff, and we said, "Oh, goodies!" He's literally stroking his beard like Santa Claus would. I'm obsessed. And so you guys really killed it, and we appreciate you. You're and we're so, gonna post some of it because it's just really cool. You guys are so cute, and you are sweet and kind. You're lovely. You're demure. You're very mindful. mindful. Cute to cute, cute to cute. <laughs> so you don't I wonder go to- if by the time this comes out, people will be like, "What is that?" Uh, people the tr- are the trend already, is over. <laughs> people are done with that, but I'll never be. I done think it's hilarious. With that. Personally, speaking of very cutesy, cutesy, very, very demure, demure, very mindful. <laughs> um, I think by the time you hear this, it's gonna be like what October seventh? You said, Mikey, October seventh, and that means, guys, that our collection, our morbid collection with Spencer's, will be launching. Spencer's, remember? Do you guys remember the fucking? Like, remember you would go to the mall with your friends yep. and you'd be like, oh my God, do you guys want to go in the back of Spencer's? And giggle a little bit. We can bit. laugh. <laughs> we can laugh back there. We have a collection now with them. We do. We have sweatshirts. I'm literally wearing one right now. She actually is. These sweatshirts are really fun. I love so them. So comfortable too. So comfy. I recommend sizing up as much as you can because then you'll just be like wearing Smushy. a blanket essentially. Yeah. This and is we so have nice. a blanket. Yeah, there's Spencer's. a blanket. There is a blanket. There's earrings. There's press on nails. There's press on nails. There's, I think, a, like a, oh, makeup brushes. There's a palette, even a makeup palette, a like makeup an eyeshadow palette. palette. There's cups, there's mugs. Cups. We got cups. It's, we got cups. <laughs> We're drinking out of cups, being a bitch. <laughs> it's great. It's our chair and it's our problem. And it's it a happy, is. it's not even a problem. It's a great thing to have. So it's really fun and go check it out. It's in stores. Yes, we're going to go, we're going to be doing a um, a little visit to the Spencer stores. Yeah. And I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Pop off, buy it. Um, so oh, hold oh. on. I just have to, I need you to, I'm going off on a, on a spiel here. Okay? Here we go. I need you to watch Secret Lives of Mormon Wives on Hulu. But you told me I might not be able to. No, I think hang. you'll be fine. I decided because yeah, I was be thinking. Fine. So I watched it in two days. I started it on Saturday morning and just watched it while I decorated for Halloween. Love that. Watched it the next day. Drew, Drew even got into it. Damn. And I was thinking about some of the other things that happened, and I don't want to like spoil it for you, but you just you have to watch it. Hmm. It's so good. I'm interested. I keep just saying, like, what's going to happen to mom talk? Is this going to destroy mom talk? talk? (laughs) And I've seen so many people, like so many of our listeners, like I've posted stuff on Insta and they've been responding to it. And I just wanted to say I'm having the best time. I love Just talking about mom talk and Mormon wives. Just hanging out. It's so good. Oh, I love, one of my favorite things is when uh, our listeners are all, like, we're all enjoying the same thing. Yes. And then, like, we'll post about it, and I get a bunch of messages that are just, like, vibing with yes. it, and I'm like, I love this. It's so fun. Because it feels like hanging out with a bunch of people that are really I was just going to say, it's like a big hang sesh. It's true. I, I love, love it. That. All right, I'll let you get to everything now. All right. Um, 
before I begin, John and I are watching Only Murders in the Building, and it's really good so far, the uh, last couple of seasons. I was so. going to say, how many seasons is that at now? Four, I think. But it's oh, wow. really good. I watched a little Martin bit of season Short, one. Steve Martin, A+. Plus, so Selena good. Gomez, so fucking good. So good. Yeah. Yeah, I watched a little bit of season one, and then I, for no reason, I just fell off of it. Can but I, I want to get back, get back it. to it. It's a cozy show. I it love is it. a cozy show. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to talk to you about some cemeteries. Cozy. Today. Because uh, cozy, I suppose. I think they are. So I have a wild cemetery. Do you? Wild. It is the Westminster Burying Grounds in Maryland. Okay. Uh, it is a cemetery that's at the Westminster Presbyterian Church, which is now not the church anymore. It's called Westminster Hall. Okay. Um, and they it was created in 1786, the burial grounds. Damn, that is going back quite a ways. It's old. It was actually made before the church was even erected, and the church was erected over it, which made some catacombs happen. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> so, Hello? So there's that. That's terrifying. And this happens to have a very famous resident. Does it? Mr. Edgar Allan Poe himself. I is know in this him. Cemetery. You know him. I've heard of his work. I love yeah. your work. And yeah, I love your work. He was actually initially buried in an unmarked grave because of his strange end of his life. Mm. Um, but you know, then we, they will we'll talk it. about that. Don't worry. But uh, later, according to morbidlybeautiful.com, which is a very interesting website. A bunch of children from a local school raised money to get him a marker at the entrance of the cemetery. They called the fundraiser Pennies for Poe. That's remember, hilarious and adorable. I remember learning about that. Did you really? Yeah, when we talked about Edgar Allan Poe so in school. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. He was buried actually three different times in that cemetery. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like you probably shouldn't disturb anybody's body that much. Yeah. I mean, he's so wily. Like, he was wily in life. He was wily in death. Mm. He still is. Yeah. The marker that was made um, at the entrance of the cemetery was made with, you know, some of the raised funds. And it had this little, like, medallion thing on it with his image on it. And it's been stolen. And it was stolen and ended up being found in a flea market in Charleston, West Virginia. What the fuck? Yeah. Because I guess it was one of them was, like, bronze or something. and Or copper, one of those. And then... The newer one was marble. Oh, and they wow. stole the marble one. Because that's expensive. But then it showed up at a flea market Don't in steal West Virginia. Things. Don't steal things from graveyards. That's for fucking don't sure. Don't steal things from anywhere, don't but steal specifically things. Yeah. not from graveyards. But like definitely don't steal from graveyards. That's bold and brazen. Yeah. So he's uh, people that are also buried in that cemetery a lot, like near Edgar Allan Poe, um, are his wife, Virginia Clem Poe, and his mother-in-law, Maria Poe Clem. Whoa. You may be like weird that they have the same last names but reversed, and you would be correct, but that's because his wife was his cousin. I always forget that. Troubled man. And then indeed. someone tells me that, and, and I you say, go, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, first yeah. cousin? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I think she was also young. I remember that. Like part. he was like 26 or something. She was, she like, was 14, like 13 right? or 14. Yeah. yeah. He was a, he was a situation. We're going One to a those. restaurant where he drank in the cellars. They, yeah, he drank a lot. So yeah. <laughs> there's definitely that. Let's go drink in the cellars that Edgar. There you go. <laughs> drink in the cellars with me where Edgar and Poe drank so I know it's real. <laughs> so I know it's real. <laughs> well, people will see Poe hanging out in this place. Often the cemetery? Just, yeah, the cemetery. Okay. Often just standing over his own grave. He um, would. He really would. And he's always seen like wearing a long black coat. He's wearing a black fedora, like a big one. And he's always got a scarf covering part of his face, almost like he's trying to hide. That's spooky. Which is really creepy. Um, people believe he may be feeling some, you know, regret for how his life panned out because, like, sure, he's pretty famous now, but, like, at what cost? And he really wasn't when he was he alive, He really wasn't right? as much, yeah. So his death was gnarly, and I'm sure he is even puzzled by it still. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so let's go on a little side tangent here, and let's talk about Poe's mysterious death really quick. Let's. So I'm not going to – I'll go into, like, a kind of generalized look at it because I really would like to go into this a little further later. Alina, I think you should do an episode yeah. on that. I feel like that'd be good. There's many things theories about his death that I yeah. think would be very interesting to go into because they range from like you know being beaten to death to carbon monoxide poisoning so I feel like there would be yeah. like evidence of the beating yeah versus if he died of carbon it's pretty monoxide interesting, poisoning though. I think you should do that for maybe like maybe like Halloween oh there you go like that like, might be a fun if, one because it's very interesting I don't know if an episode comes out on Halloween but but like, I'll give you I'll give you a little uh 
generalize yeah. to look at it. So September 27th, 1849, 40-year-old Poe left for Philadelphia on business. He was set to help edit a collection of poems. It was going to be kind of a big deal. It was for a well-known poet at the time. So this was like a big deal that he was going to edit them. But he never arrived. Ruh -ruh. And he never showed up. And no one heard a damn word from him. He was supposed to be going back to Richmond, actually, during that week for his own fucking wedding. Because he was engaged at the time to uh, Sarah Elmira Royster Shelton because his other wife had passed away from consumption. Oh, fuck. Um, and it's like he vanished for a full week. Just vanished. Wow. No one knew where he was, didn't contact anyone. And then he was found on October 3rd, a week later, 1849, on election day. And he was found, a man named Joseph W. Walker was on his way to Gunner's Hall, which was a polling station and like a local public house. And outside in the alley, he came across a man dressed like shit, smelling like shit, looking like shit, and lying on the ground, basically falling in and out of consciousness and unable to move. Yikes. So he was like, wow, that's crazy. And then he looked at him and he was like, that's Edgar Allan Poe. Fuck. Um, so he was like, can I call some for you, someone for you, sir? Like, you okay? You good? And by call, I mean write a letter because it's 1849. And Poe was like, uh, yeah, you can write a guy named Joseph Snodgrass. <laughs> Snodgrass, <laughs> who was Poor apparently guy. a friend, an editor, um, in possession of a really cool name. And also <laughs> he side hustled as kind of like a doctor-ish medical person. Uh, side hustled as a <laughs> yeah. doctor-ish medical kind of yeah. person. Imagine bringing your, your yeah. new mans around your family and they're like, oh, what do you do? And he's like, yeah. I'm a doctor-ish medical kind of person side hustle for my side that. hustle. Yeah, you know. It was the 1800s, so that was pretty normal. It's giving Dr. Um, Death. So he did. He wrote him. According to the Smithsonian.com, he wrote it on October 3rd, 1849. Dear sir, there is a gentleman, rather the worse for wear, at Ryan's Fourth Ward Poles, who goes under the cognomen of Edgar A. Poe, and who appears in great distress, and he says he is acquainted with you. He is in need of immediate assistance. Yours in haste. Joseph W. Walker. He is in need of immediate assistance. So let me postmark this, mail. send it to you, hope it gets to you soon enough. But he did write yours in haste. Post haste. I'm Russian. Uh, he was brought, he eventually, he showed up and he was brought to, you know, get some medical attention. And he spent four days in and out of, you know, basically in and out of dying, essentially. Yeah. Um, he was in and out of consciousness and he died on October 7th. During that time, he was hallucinating. He was going into fits. Bitch. What? This episode comes out on October 7th. Whoa! It happens again. It happens again. I didn't even... Wow. That's weird. Because Mikey literally just told us that. Yeah, we wouldn't have known that. What the fuck? Damn. Why does that so always weird. happen? That's so weird. Damn. I, I got, meant for that to happen. Totally. I got full chills about Oi. that. Well, during this whole time, he was hallucinating, he was going into fits, and he was screaming the name Reynolds over and over. Reynolds. To this day, no one's been able to determine who the fuck Reynolds is. And it's also documented that he was discovered in dirty old clothing that wasn't his. That's they weird. were not his clothes. No one knows who these clothes belong to, why he looked like such shit, why he was hallucinating, and why he was screaming the name Reynolds, and then he just died. That's weird. I mean, sometimes when you're, like, about to die, you hallucinate yeah. and talk to people that aren't there. But he was, like, really going through it. Yeah. I mean, he and he was so bad that he couldn't recollect what had happened to him. Yeah, that's strange. So, Do you he, think there's, like, a possibility that he just, like, went on a bender? Well, that's the thing. So he was also supposed to be in his sober era. Yes. Um, so this sober is doubly, king. you know, he was trying. And, you know... Again, there's so many theories that go into this. Like, there's something called cooping back then where these people on election day would, like, kidnap someone, like, beat them and kidnap them and dress them in disguise and make them go vote for who they wanted them to. Yeah. And then release them again. And sometimes they would, like, keep them in a room and, like, ply them with alcohol and shit and, like, make them do it. Oh, that'd be really so sad if that happened. So there is a theory that, like, cooping was responsible for this and that maybe, like, that's what it was, which would be wild. And just really fucking sad. Yeah. It's, like, it's fascinating and really tragic and sad. Huh. Um, but, like, we'll go into it at a later date, I think, for sure. But just know the man had a strange, troubled, you know, weird death yeah troubled life yeah so seeing him like 
contemplating his choices over his own grave after he's died seems pretty fucking poey to me. I feel like that would make for the you beginning know? of an awesome movie. Right? Just Poe standing over his own grave. And then you just like delve into his life yeah. and choices. That'd be sick. Somebody made that yet? Well, and he also shows up at the altar inside of like what was the church, um, Westminster Hall now a lot. Like he'll just be walking around in there. That's cool. Um, and every year since then, this is just interesting to me. Every year since the 1940s, a mysterious figure visits Poe's grave on his birthday. Oh, I knew this. Which I think is January 19th, I'm pretty sure. Can look it up really quick. Um, and he leaves three red roses yeah. and a half-empty bottle of cognac, which is supposed to be Poe's favorite poison of choice. Whoa. And then he toasts to him and then just leaves every year. And apparently one year, there, and he leaves, these people leave notes sometimes. Mm -hmm. One year there was a note that said, Edgar, I haven't forgotten you. And according to America's Haunted Road Trips, the original person who did this, like started this whole thing, died in 1998. There's proof of that. Oh, shit. But they haven't revealed who it is. It's never been revealed. That's and then so someone cool. else took it up after them. Obsessed. After that person died, someone else has taken it upon themselves to do that. That's the kind of lore that I want going on at my gravesite. Right? Like, be nice at my gravesite. Yeah. And just be dark and leave me weird poison and roses one thing i would think he he'd be pretty psyched about is after he died one he became insanely famous yeah but two he all his shit is so synonymous with like gothic culture and like yeah. you know spooky ravens and shit like that's like the OG, that's what you want og goth king yeah it's true like he was fucked up yeah. Which I think kind of, yeah, like he was fucked like up. Emo but goth. obviously his like works are so gothic and wild and mm. like, you know. The deep, deep lore of Mr. Poe. The deep, po. deep lore. But that's Edgar Allan Poe hanging around. That's you fucking know. cool. There's also something that's called the Screaming Skull of Cambridge there. Tell me all about that. Uh, which was what initially actually brought me to this cemetery. It would bring me to that cemetery. I said, I said a Screaming Skull? What? You and, said, hey, what's that about? And I was like, I bet it's not an actual Screaming Skull. No, it is fucking it awesome is. yeah because i was like oh you're gonna tease me with this and then it's gonna be something stupid nope nope screaming skull apparently a minister a local minister was murdered nearby what? and after he was buried his skull kept screaming relentlessly all hours of night and people said the shrieking would drive people mad because I it would it not would. stop so they dug him up they get and this is like in the 1800s they dug him up they gagged the skull encased it in concrete and then decapitated him and placed the concrete screaming skull next to his grave i sort of feel like there was a better way to go about that probably but i, I just screaming. sort of feel that way i kept screaming good yeah, i would too good. i'd, I'd be I'd like scream guess louder. what you yeah, yeah. exactly you fucked up i'm gonna yeah. get louder i'm getting louder and sometimes they can still hear screaming coming from there Screaming skull. <laughs> you know that gif where it's like, I ain't get no sleep because of y'all. <laughs> y'all ain't get no sleep because of me. That's all oh, that's, the, that's, that's the, the skull. The, that's the minister. It that's is the death. minister's skull. Gagged and all. <laughs> Just gagged and all. <laughs> wow. That's it. So really was that. <laughs> Um, there's also a few more stories like Lucia Watson Taylor. She was a 16 year old girl who passed away. That's a really pretty in 18, name. I know, right? In 1816, her ghost can be seen. She has very long, dark hair. Of course, she's wearing a flowing dress. Obviously, she can be seen on very dark and foggy evenings in in full body apparition, and she's always seen kneeling and praying over her own grave. Oh. And her app, she is a, that's a real person in the cemetery. Like yeah. she, you can find her grave and it says, her epitaph says, blessed with peculiar sweetness of temper, a mind pure and exalted, a heart pious and faithful. She died beloved and lamented, early, bright, transient, chaste as morning dew. She sparkled, was exalted, and went to heaven. That is so beautiful. And I was like, Wow. People really loved her. She, I was going to say, what a loved, like, woman. Young woman. Like, Yeah, that's a beautiful engraving. And also it would have been hella expensive. Very expensive. But it's just like, damn. Like, that. What? that's a beautiful epitaph. Like, it is. Beautiful. That really is. They also just knew how to say shit they way did. better back then. They really did. But I was like, she sounds like a... A seriously cool chick. But then you wonder, I'm like, why is she praying over her grave? I know. I hope, like, 
I hope she did make it to where she wanted to go. I know. I'm like, I hope wherever it is, you're yeah. you're happy. Yeah. You know, maybe you're just, I'm hoping it's like a residual thing. Yeah. It's not just actually. But there's another uh, kind of creepier story okay. uh, that is from the catacombs. Because there's catacombs here because the church was built right over the cemetery. That is yeah. too much. And one in might the catacombs, say. there's a story of a woman named Leona Wellesley. She was a woman from a local asylum who was said to be so mad that they buried her in her straitjacket to keep her restrained in death. Unnecessary. Yeah, that's what I say. Not demure, not, not mindful. Yeah, not mindful at all. And Hate people it. say they can see and feel her following them around and she will laugh in your ear maniacally. Good. Which I was like, I probably wouldn't know. I would do the same. Yeah. Um, when also the groundkeeper from long ago named Old Valance. Obsessed. <laughs> he was the he was the grave digger and the groundskeeper. He'll chase your ass out of there if you fuck around in there. Well, fuck around yeah. and find out. He That's kept what they those say. grounds perfectly, and he will not tolerate shenanigans. Good. And when he chases you out, he'll do so with a shovel. <laughs> so it's just a ghost coming out, an old Valance ghost running at you with a shovel. Go hit your head out of there. With a shovel. Get out of there. And apparently there are rumors of a lot of premature burials that happened here. Sorry, which, sorry, qual? Yeah, you heard it right, premature, because it was in the time when a lot of that would happen often. Like, they didn't have all the technology to know when someone was actually dead, which is why they had all those, the bells and the other things where they could, like, you know, yeah. grave alarms, essentially. Holy fuck. Um, this happened a lot. So, they, I mean, that's a perfect recipe for a ghost, if you ask Absolutely me. Absolutely it is. And the catacombs are especially haunted down there because of this. Yeah. Because they are some of the oldest graves. Uh, there was also a lot of grave robbings down there, especially in the catacombs. Worst kind of individual. Yes, truly. Worst and kind. Full on body snatchings as well. Because Why? this was in the time, there's a, um, there's a medical college nearby. And okay. this was, an, and it's an old medical college. It was in the times when students or people hired by medical colleges would come snatch cadavers to use in the cadaver labs. Yep. So... That's not great for the people who are buried there. No. And also bodies were just moved into different areas or gravestones were moved and just left like bodies in different places because of like code violations and shit when they were like redoing this whole place. Oh, wow. So they have actually like there's rumors that they found bodies like under walkways and shit. Oh, man. Yeah. That's with like no sad. graves. That's really like, sad. Yeah. Um. So it's gnarly. You know, in these streets sometimes. It, it do be. But when the church, and this is just uh, what I'll leave you on for this one, when the church ceased being an actual church around 1977, in the 19, eight, late 1970s, early 80s, local school children would use the graveyard as a playground because 80s. You probably shouldn't do that. There were reports of people witnessing kids throwing around human skulls and shit. I don't have... A lot to say about that. Yeah. And at the same time, so much to say about that. Yep. That's a, that's a fucked up kid. That's, that's a lot. If, if I was a child and somebody threw a skull at me, I'd leave. <laughs> I'd leave. I'd leave. I'd leave, I'd leave wherever I'd I was call at. an adult. I'd say, I would. <laughs> say, mom, can you pick me up? I'm scared. Yeah, that would, that would not be something I would engage in no. when I was little. And I would hope my children would have something to say about that as yeah, well. Yeah, they're better than that. If I threw a human skull at one of my kids, they would not just catch it and go about their days. Like, they'd be like, why'd you do that? If you threw a human what is skull that? at one of your kids, we'd have to have a serious talk with you. It's true. I'd say, John. John, it's gone I'm too far. I'm on my far. way. It's gone too far. John, I'm on my way. We got to talk to if this If another crazy. kid threw a human skull at one of my kids, they'd be like, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, no. You know, I feel I am confident in that. And also it'd be on site. It's true. I'm just kidding. It's true. Uh, but yeah, so that's Westminster Hall and Burial Ground in Baltimore, Maryland. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, my cemetery is Bachelor's Grove Cemetery. Ooh. And according to many, honey, many. 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 Say. Bachelor's Grove Cemetery, which is in Illinois, is one of the most haunted locations in the world. Oh, we love to see it. In this world. In our world. Yeah, our universe, if We you will. love to see a globally recognized haunt. We sure fucking do. <laughs> now, this cemetery happens to be the oldest one in all of Cook County. The first burial on record there took place in 1834. Damn. Yeah, a long time ago. Altogether, there's about 80 graves on site, but... 
That scared the shit out of oh me. Oh my that's god, a, that was a crazy bark. Either Sydney or Blanche was like, "That's wrong." She was like, rah, 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 rah. "She said there's about seventy eight. She okay. said, "Don't you dare <laughs> round up. Don't you round up." I don't know Tell why I made your truth. dog southern. <laughs> They became Southern. Uh, it well, one of them is Blanche, you know. Devereaux. She, the Blanche Devereaux. She's yeah. Southern Belle. I know. You know. But the thing is, a lot of these graves have been dug up, vandalized. Like, this place is desecrated. That's, and people treat it like shit. People get it together. So guess what? If you're, you're Desecrating graves. Yeah. If you're going to go visit this place, it, I found differing opinions on whether or not it's open to the public. Like Some people say it's closed. Some people are like, no, you can go in the daytime. No, it's totally fine. I don't know. Um, so like <laughs> enter at your know. own risk. But yeah. only if you're there to be nice. Yeah. And respectful. Yeah. If you're there to steal headstones, I don't know you. And I, I don't, don't like you. you. And you know what? You're not listening to our podcast because our listeners are respectful. Exactly. Okay. So turn this off if you're not. Turn it off. But anyway, the cemetery most likely gets its name from the Batchelder family who settled there around 1820. So it's over not the Bachelor reality show. No. Okay. Well, it, now it is. <laughs> now it is. Because over time, the spelling of the name probably changed depending on the source. Ah. And eventually, when the family no longer owned the property, there was a group of single men who moved to the area. That's and that's funny. it was like four or five single men. They were like, oh my God, Bachelor's Grove. That's why they started <laughs> calling it that. Now, eventually, ownership transferred over to the Fulton family around the early 1900s, it seems. One of the youngest Fultons buried in the cemetery is Emma Fulton, who's only one year old when she passed oh. away. And she'll come back later, so remember oh, that. Oh, Emma forever. But according to Ghost City Tours, everything was going pretty well for quite some time while the cemetery was under the Fulton family. But around 1950, the mid I think it's the Midlothian Turnpike, it was rerouted. And the ba and Bachelor's Grove became an even more rural area than it once was. Okay. So the Turnpike used to, like... Like, it was a Go very frequently traveled road. But when they relocated it, the old turnpike didn't really have a use anymore. Mm. So it's, like, really rural now. Creepy. Yeah. Now, since it was out of the way of all the hustle and bustle for the city, of the city, it was the perfect place for the 60s teens to get their Lover's Lane vibes oh, on. Oh, hell yeah, it was. Of course. And, of course, for party animals, they could have their woods parties. They could get drunk and go crazy in the cemetery. They could get lit. Exactly. But unfortunately, that came along with a lot of vandalism, including grave digging. Again, I say, get it together. Get it together. Get it together. I was not out here grave digging. No, I was never, a teen. ever grave dug, and I never, ever will. No, and you are a pretty reckless teen, and you weren't grave digging. <laughs> this is true. I partied in the woods, but we just yeah. partied in the woods. Like, yeah. I didn't fuck anything up. If you came across a grave, you left it be. If I came across you know? a grave, I'd probably leave, to yeah. be honest. I'd be like, well, we shouldn't be here. Yeah, this, this is hallowed ground. This is disrespectful. But this is not the only time this thing is this next thing that I'm going to talk about has happened. But in 1973, the Chicago Tribune reported that seven teens were, quote unquote, seized while they were in the middle of trying to dig up a grave. What the fuck was the purpose? Like, that's wily. Well, me. they do tell us the purpose. Oh, the police said the youths arrived Wednesday night, got out and prepared to resume digging when the policemen announced themselves. The youths told the police they were doing it as a lark. Which is like a, a joke. Lark. Just like a fun little They were doing joke. it for lols. Yeah, just doing it for the plot. You That's know? super duper funny. It's all for the plot. Kicking Mr. it Police with the boys. Officer. Larking it up. Yeah, just digging up dead bodies. Are you fucking kidding me, bro? Who are you? Yeah, that's the thing. They got in trouble. I think um, most of them like had to be bailed out and like do com some community service shit. Why are you bailing them out? Probably the parents. Let them sit in there. I would have. If I was yeah. my kid, I'd be like, you just dug up a grave. Why don't you think about yeah, your fucking you, life? You just desecrated a grave. You think about your fucking life and I'll think about my choices yeah. as a parent. Say, okay? Contemplate your shit. Yeah, we'll do this separate. But police presence definitely became more regular once they realized how bad the vandalism was becoming. Because it got really bad to the point where people were just like knocking over headstones, stealing headstones. That's become such a frequent thing that there are so many graves that are just unmarked. I hope that they are so fucking haunted. Yeah, like those people. Like, I hope they are being driven mad. Yeah, I hope so, too. I truly do. Yeah, that's the thing. You steal a gravestone out of a graveyard or you knock one over intentionally. Like. Or, like, vandalize one in any way. I hope you have the the haunting you deserve. I agree. Because just what, what are you getting out of that? Yeah. That's so fucking sick. Go to a rage room. Yeah. I, I just don't get Take it. Take a walk. 
What are you doing? Yeah. Sit down. Graveyards are so peaceful. Just take a walk. Yeah. I Put some fucking headphones on and transport to another time and place. What are you doing knocking exactly. shit over? I don't get it. No. But because the vandalism was ramping up, police presence definitely became a more uh, frequent sight. Yeah. But even as recently as 2009, there's been vandalism discovered with people literally spray painting the tombstones. Man. Like, get a life. Yeah, yeah, truly. But some people also say the cemetery became a very popular place with satanic worshippers and even the mob. Whoa. The, the mob makes an appearance. Yeah, obviously before police presence got a little heavier there. Yeah. But there's a swamp behind the cemetery, and it said that after they took people out there, you know, to kill them mob style, they just throw their bodies into the swamp. Yeah. I mean, what else are you going to do, like, you know? Damn, that's crazy. That's some mob shit that right there. That is some mob shit. Um, and then as far as the satanic worshiping goes, police say that they found chicken heads littering the ground and, trigger warning, dead dogs on the property. That's fucked up. Which, you know, lends itself to satanic worshiping rumors. Lends itself to asshole behavior. I agree. Is what it does. I agree. Yeah. Uh, one of the paranormal researchers that they had on the Ghost Adventures episode, because... The Ghost Adventures. There's the Ghost Adventures episode... John Stevenson, he was one of the paranormal researchers, and he said he remembers being at the cemetery when he was younger, and he said he actually saw what he assumed was some kind of satanic ritual going on because people were dressed in these black robes, like, standing around a fire and chanting things at the same time. Damn. That's pretty scary. It's pretty satanic. Could be. Fires and chanting. Robes. Robes. <laughs> you know? Togetherness. <laughs> Together. <laughs> Community. Vibes. <laughs> no. Spooky vibes. I'm like, that could have just been witches. Yeah, like, that could have just cool been some shit. witches vibing. I agree. To be honest. Well, one of the most famous ghost sightings and my particular favorite ghost sighting in Bachelor's Grove is the woman in white or the Madonna, as she's called. I've seen this one, this picture. Oh, my God. In a few books. I want it. I was always fascinated by this picture. It's so beautiful yeah i remember because i was one of those kids who would look at haunting books like all the time yeah like obsessively we know that about you in pictures like there's like the brown ghost or something like that which is like and it's like a a photo of this like specter coming down the the oh coming down the staircase right it's like a it's like it's like the brown lady or something like that i think she's supposed to be wearing like a brown outfit or something but it looks like a fucking terrifying i know the one you're talking about i was so obsessed with that picture but it fucked me up i also think well if it fucked you up and it still is i think they debunked that one did they i think they debunked that one Bah. yeah it was like somebody like put something on the like lens of the camera or something and like fucked with the negatives I'm going to look this up because I've been holding on to that for oh, decades. Oh, no. I'm sorry to have crushed oh, your life. No. But, but you know what? This picture you're about to talk about is another one yeah. that I remember just obsessively staring at this photo and just being like, is this fucking real? Because I just couldn't comprehend it. They haven't debunked it. Whoa. They haven't debunked it. Nobody's been able to. We'll Whoa. post the picture because... She was captured, the the Madonna of Bachelor's Grove was captured in a now famous photograph. It's the one we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It is stunningly, hauntingly, breathtakingly beautiful. I will never be over it. I I honestly want to get a print for this room. Honestly, I agree. It's a gorgeous photo. It's so, it's like melancholy. But whimsical. Beautiful and spooky. It's very, very beautiful. Yeah. In the photo, she's got this long brown hair, and she's wearing a white flowing dress, Mm -hmm. and she's sitting on top of a checkered tomb, kind of looking off into the distance, and parts of her are, like, translucent. Yeah. It's it's, gorgeous. And they haven't been able to debunk that one. This one. Yeah. Yeah, no. That one, they, I, I was looking it up. I don't, I haven't found any evidence of Mm -hmm. it at least. No, not this one. Yeah. But other people claim that they've seen this woman wandering around the cemetery and they say she seems to be looking for someone or something or someone. Sometimes she's seen leaving flowers on other graves In early sightings, She was seen holding a baby, but in more recent sightings, she doesn't have the baby anymore. Huh. Which is interesting. Now, there's a grave in the cemetery, and its headstone just says infant daughter. So some people think these two things are connected, like the Madonna and the infant daughter. Okay. Um, Something super creepy but sweet is that people will now leave baby toys at that infant daughter grave site. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's so scary. It seems that the first reports of the Madonna of Bachelor's Grove came from a radio radio show in the 70s where someone called in with a sighting. 
But there are two main theories as to who the woman could be, and they both actually come from the same family. So there's Catherine, I think it's Vote Fulton, and then Luella Fulton Rogers, and they were sisters-in-law back in the 1930s. Okay. According to grunge.com, the infant daughter marker, marker could be the grave of Marcia May, who was Catherine's daughter. Apparently, there was like some turmoil in the family around the time that Marcia passed away because okay. obviously she passed away when she was a baby. Yeah. And for whatever reason, Catherine's parents wouldn't allow their grandchild, a Fulton, to be buried on vote land. Hmm. So when Catherine passed away, she wasn't buried in the Fulton plot, but somewhere far away. And some believe that her spirit roams all the way back to Bachelor's Grove, where Marcia ended up being buried, to like check in on her daughter. Oh, okay. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, others believe that the woman in white isn't actually Catherine, but her sister-in-law, Luella. Unfortunately, Mm. Luella died right near Bachelor's Grove on the week of her 60th birthday. She died in a hit-and-run accident, and she happens to be buried in Bachelor's Grove Cemetery next to her sister, Emma Fulton. Ah. Now, Emma's headstone was stolen from the cemetery by some asshat. And because this happened so frequently, the stone wasn't handed back, like wasn't put back in the cemetery. Instead, it was handed over to Tinley Park Historical Society for safekeeping. Yeah. Because they don't want people just to like go back and steal it all over again. Yeah. But those who believe that the woman in white is Luella point to a photograph that bears a striking resemblance. We'll post it. And they say that she's most likely wandering around looking for her sister's headstone. Oh my goodness yeah that like breaks my heart i know i'm not sure which one i believe like yeah. I, fe- I feel like either could fit it makes sense mm-hmm. both of them yeah and either way it's really fucking yeah, sad because she seems just lost and like very unsettled and they care for the baby like yeah. a lot and it's interesting that whoever the woman in white was was carrying a baby for some time but now isn't huh, that is really interesting yeah Now, another paranormal uh, happening that's been reported on for decades at this point, with many people saying the same thing, is the disappearing farmhouse. It's also called the Magic House and the Phantom House. All right, spill that shit, because I'm in. The Chicago Tribune wrote, The site also has a disappearing house. At night, people see an old one-story farmhouse. It's been spotted on both sides of the dirt road as you enter the cemetery. People who don't know each other all draw sketches of the same house, even down to the lamp burning faintly inside. They're flabbergasted to know there's no house there. What? So people all say, like people really agree on like most of the details. They all say that the house is a white Victorian era house with a porch, a swing and a white picket fence. What the fuck? The only thing that really varies about this story that people will give is where they see the house. And whether it looks solid or translucent, some people say it looks like a legit house that is just there. And then other people say it's like almost translucent. And then every in every story, the house either shrinks the closer you get to it or it just completely disappears. Oh, my God. I want to see this. There's also no evidence that a house ever existed on the property. No. no. So like, no. Hello? Hello. Hello. That's bonkers. That like one is a crazy. Spectral, tr- a spectral house. And the thing, the other thing is that like people will go and they'll experience that. Like they'll see the house, it'll disappear or it'll shrink, and then they'll go back with somebody else and be like, "I have to show you this," and like they yeah. hope it happens again. Most people have never seen it twice. Oh, I love it. Isn't that I interesting? I want to see it so bad. Once in a lifetime shit. Now, another paranormal sighting is the blue light phenomenon. And this is the most um, reported one from Bachelors Grove Cemetery. Oh, okay. According to research done by Peter, I think it's Crapia. Uh, he's the founder of Bachelors Grove Cemetery and Settlement Research Center. And he's done a ton of writing about the different haunts here. So definitely check them out. But he said the first report of this seems to come from Jack Hermansky back in 1970. Jack was out in the cemetery and he said he saw this blue light. And he said, as he watched it, the light, quote, grew as large as a basketball, blinked in 10 to 20 second intervals, and rapidly changed positions. Ooh. So the sightings differ, and opinions about when it's sighted also differ. Some people say they see it during the day, but other people say it only comes out on clear, very moonlit nights. Ooh, I love that. Some people have been chased by this light, they claim. Stop. Some people also say they felt compelled to follow it and have started to follow it in 
have made it pretty far. And then they'll be startled when it appears right behind them. Like it'll be like leading the way. And then you'll like you'll lose track of it and you'll turn around. and It'll be right behind you. And you're like, what do you want? What's up? What's up? Like, what are you trying to tell me? What do you need? What's going on? (laughs) That's Um, creepy. One account also says that they were pushed to the ground by the light. But I don't personally think the light would be that rude. Yeah, I I like the light. I don't want the light to be that rude. I don't think it is. Yeah. Now, on Ghost Adventures, they actually did see a blinking light off in the distance. It's fucking clear as day. I couldn't tell if it was blue because of the night vision camera. Yeah. But they captured it and it like moves and everything. It was spooky as fuck. Yeah, that is spooky. Now, one of the more rare reported sightings is the yellow man. Yellow man? Mm -hmm. Peter Crepia wrote that the first written record talking about the yellow man sighting was in October of 1984. The Chicago Sun Times reported that researcher Norman Basile, I think it is, saw the apparition and took a photo using a a thousand speed film. Norman Basile told them, a month and a half ago, I saw an apparition standing by a tree. It was a yellow figure, a man with a hat, probably in his 40s. Now, so that's like what got reported. But apparently that night, Norman and a group of paranormal researchers including Dale Kazmarek, I think is how you say it. He's Mm -hmm. the president of the Ghost Research Society. And he also, I don't know if it's him who's responsible or if it's somebody in that society that took that famous picture of the white woman. Oh, The woman in white. Oh, shit. Um, But he was also camping with Norman. And they were all, you know, doing research. But it was one of the other researchers, supposedly, who saw the yellow man. And there actually wasn't a photo taken. And they were all so shaken because after the apparition disappeared, they saw, quote, red streaking lights and watched in disbelief as a single tree began to shake frantically. What? Isn't that fucking terrifying? That is terrifying. After they saw that, they packed up and got the fuck out of there. Fuck that. I agree. (laughs) But another woman saw the yellow man apparition while she was investigating the area. She was actually getting bored because she wasn't experiencing anything. Like, she went here with these hopes of, you know, seeing the house, catching the lady in white. Nothing was happening. Yeah. And she was thinking, like, I'm going to pack up and head out of here soon. Like, nothing has happened. And that's when she saw the apparition. Oh, shit. Yeah. So the apparition was like, all right. You want to leave? (laughs) You're going to leave. Let me show you something. Now, the crazy thing about this experience is that she was there with two other people, and she's the only one who saw it. That's weird. But she literally saw it and just started running. She left. She was so scared. She was like, fuck this. Nope. Another woman who was investigating the cemetery, Nina uh, Jankowski, was distracted and standing by one of the graves in the lot when she saw something out of the corner of her eye. And at the time, she started to feel really dizzy and lightheaded, she said. Mm -hmm. But obviously, she didn't want to miss the opportunity to photograph whatever this was. So she whipped around to take the photo. And she realized that her camera was on a completely different setting than the one she'd put it on. She said, once I started feeling dizzy, it was almost as though I was somehow surrounded and being guided to take this photo. When I grabbed my digital camera, I noticed that it was turning on and off by itself. And it was on a different setting than the one I had chosen earlier. That's weird. Yeah. Now, other uh, haunts include people seeing phantom old-timey cars, like, still driving on the road. Other versions of the blue light. There's also people that see, like, red lights, too. Okay. Um, Some people have seen a phantom black dog either sitting at the entrance or running along the paths of the woods. I love a black dog. I do, too. And guess what? One of our listeners has been to this cemetery. Of course. And wrote us a captivating tale about multiple experiences that they've had. Of course. So this is Lady's Tale. Hell yeah. Lady says, hey y'all, Lady here. I love you and your podcast so much and I binge nearly everything in about three weeks. I haven't heard Bachelor's Grove brought up before. Until now, Lady. Until now. And just wanted to share a few of my experiences from back in the day when I wasn't as much of a little bitch about spooky things. (laughs) All of these stories took place in the years of 2005 to 2007 while I was a teenager. So they're probably less dramatic than what really happened, but they are things I will also never forget. I also apologize that my broke ass is writing this on my phone since I don't have a working computer. All names have been changed. So they wrote, Bachelor's Grove is a haunted cemetery in Illinois. It's pretty infamous for many reasons, including uh, producing one of the clearest pictures ever produced of a spirit. There are many fascinating tales about this place, and I have a few of my very own, which are probably, which uh, probably aren't going to be exactly what you're expecting. I have three scary ass experiences and an ending palate cleanser that's relatively funny. 
To set this up in order to get to the cemetery, you have to park at a forest preserve across the street and walk a trail that's about a half a mile long. The entrance to this trail has a train has a chain across with a sign saying no trespassing. So I'm assuming it's closed. I was just going to say maybe that gives us a little yeah. tip. Which naturally no one gave a shit about. <laughs> but the forest preserve parking lot would close at sundown. So there was also a long uh, back trail where you would need to park in a neighborhood and walk a few blocks to the forest edge where that trail began. And eventually it meets up with the main trail leading into the cemetery. Everything about this place is straight up creepy. Because of all the stories surrounding the cemetery, it naturally brought out flocks of teenagers that liked to go there at night, and it was also a place to party. Thankfully, we never partied out there, and a few times we went during the day and would clean up garbage left over from other people. Oh, that's nice. It is. From the first time I went there, I had a respect for the area. The graves were over 100 years old, and this was a sacred place that others abused, which I do regret taking entertainment from it. However, I'm glad I had these experiences because they've stuck with me all these years. Hmm. So to get to the juice, my first experience came at about 9 p.m. on a summer night. When I was 16, my best friend Maggie and I decided to go to the back trail since all our plans fell through. We walked a few blocks and came to the street that leads to the back trail. We were joking around, being kind of loud and annoying. We get about a block away and my friend grabs my arm and just stops me. Maggie says, what the fuck? And points toward the entrance of the trail. There's a massive buck standing in the entrance. Now, deer are very common in, Il in, in, in Illinois, so this isn't unheard of. However, this deer did not move and it wouldn't take our, its eyes off our faces. We stared at it for a minute and I said, fuck no, let's go. Maggie said to wait a minute since it'll just move. I decided I did not want to be gored by a deer that night, so refused and said, nope, I have the keys, let's bounce. I like that a forethought. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. As we went back and forth, a car drove past this deer and it didn't move. It kept staring at us and that image still haunts me. We started walking quickly to the car and turned back a few times and the deer never moved. What the fuck? After walking a few blocks, we lost sight of the entrance, thankfully. But once we turned back, there was a dog sitting in the middle of the street just looking at us. If it was the deer, I would have literally combusted in the middle of the street. You're not supposed to run from a potential predator, but we just booked it the remaining few blocks what to my car. Fuck? Isn't that weird? That's creepy. It's like, I feel like there's like spirits like in the animals yeah. looking out for this place. Now, oh, second spooky. That. At this time, my mom and stepdad had an amazing dog named George, RIP, and he was a huge Rottweiler and German Shepherd mix. He was the best dog I've ever met. He was extremely friendly and well-trained. The only time he would ever get aggressive is if you were playing that way or if he came across other dogs. And even then, it was out of excitement. I never saw him act aggressively towards other people for no reason. One day, another friend, Amanda, and I decided to go to Bachelor's Grove and take Rocky with us. I think the dog's name was Rocky, but it got messed up at the first part. Oh, okay. Uh, since it was during the day, we parked across the street and went to the cemetery, walked around a bit, and left after about an hour of just hanging out. During this time, we passed multiple people, and a few of them even came up to Rocky and petted him and did small talk. In hindsight, it's kind of weird of people to do hiking banter when trespassing in a cemetery. But yeah, anyway, you know. Rocky was so happy since he loves the attention in the forest. Walking the short trail back to the car, a large man wearing a black leather trench coat was walking the other direction toward the forest. Not really weird, and we initially were not scared because there were people in the cemetery, so we weren't necessarily alone. When we were about 30 feet away, Rocky just stops. I immediately got freaked out because he usually tries to approach people and I usually have to hold him back. But Rocky then stood in front of me and started growling toward this guy. Ooh. I had to kneel down and wrap my arms around his chest to keep him from attacking that guy. The dude didn't even look at us. He walked straight past us and nearly ran into the dog since he didn't even move over. He mm. never looked back. And after he turned toward the entrance of the cemetery, Rocky calmed down enough for me to keep him walking to the car. So that was weird. <laughs> so that was weird. Final spooky in the last time I have ever been to the cemetery. Amanda and I had a sleepover, and being the degenerate teenagers we were, we stayed up all night and thought it would be really cool to go to the Bachelor's Grove at dawn, since we'd never done that before. Dawn. So it's summer still, and we get there at about 5.30 a.m., and the sun is rising. It was a little foggy near the ground, but clear outside. Luckily, the Forest Preserve parking lot was unlocked, so we could take the short trail. We get to the entrance of the trail, and for some reason, I just immediately felt dread. I don't know how to explain it. It wasn't like a fight or fl flight or fight thing. It was just an intense sadness. But I just ignored it, and we start walking. We never talked this whole way, which I didn't realize until after the fact. Every step that I took felt heavy. My whole body felt like it was fighting to push through the space in front of me just to take a step. All the while, the dread is growing. I even feel kind of lightheaded. 
About halfway down the trail, I stopped. Amanda also stopped and looked at me, and we just turned around and started walking back to the car. Now my fight or flight kicked in. We went back to the car and shared that we both felt similarly. It was terrifying. I've never felt that intense feeling of dread ever again, and I really hope I never do. I literally never went back after that day, and I never will. Holy shit. Which, that had to be, like, such an intense feeling. something, yeah. Now for a relatively funny story. A few weeks before my final visit, a huge group of us, rowdy teenagers, decided to go to the cemetery to hang out because why not violate a peaceful place when you're bored and have nowhere to go? See, just what we were talking about. As long as you're not tipping headstones. Yeah. So it was completely dark out and we needed to take the back way. The walk was fine, but we were super loud. We get to the cemetery and we break off into groups and walk around. After about 10 minutes, another group shows up running in, terrifying, and said the thing all teenagers dread. The fucking cops are coming. (laughs) The cops. Everyone books it in different directions. Keep in mind, this is not a maintained forest er- forested area. So outside the short main trail to the cemetery, it's a fucking forest. So me and like three others trudge into this haunted hell forest trying to find a path to the street so we can just walk back to the car. After about an hour of using our Nokia phones for light, we finally get to the street. So I am a 5'3", petite, white-ass girl, and let me tell you what people saw walking out of this haunted hell forest. I was wearing black shorts and a dirty white tank top, and I was torn all up from the thorns and branches. I had small cuts all over my body, including my face, that were just dripping blood at this point. (laughs) Anyone driving past at that moment saw a child walk out of this haunted forest covered in blood all over my body, and no one stopped. Anyway, you guys are great, and I hope you come to Dallas or Chicago one day. Stay weird. Thanks, lady. Holy shit. Interesting cemetery. That cemetery sounds gnarly. I want to go to there. I want to go to there. I want to go to there and I want to see the Madonna and I I want want to see the the disappearing house. Yes. I think we should go. Chicago's not even that far. Let's go. I have family in Chicago. Hi, Tom and Greg. There you go. Hi, Tom and Greg. We love you. We do. They love you so much. I love them. Love. There's so much love here. So I think we need to go. I think we're going to go. We need to see these. Freaking cemeteries. Let's go see some cemeteries. Because I'm da- I want to see the Westminster burying grounds, but yes. that's just in Maryland. That's not even that far. What road trip? Cemetery ro- bitch. Cemetery, cemetery road, trip. road trip. Let's do it. Oh my god. Someday. Someday. Wow. Someday it's just gonna be bopping around to cemeteries. Well, until then, we <laughs> hope you keep listening. And we hope you keep it weird. But not so weird that you don't go visit these cemeteries respectfully because they just sound so cool, don't they? Respectfully. R E S P E C T. Fully. Find out what it means to cemeteries. Oh my God. <laughs> that was great. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>